when did you really start to find your stride financially and like lock it? I was the ramen noodle there? king, bro. Like <laughs> leftovers king. I, I um, so here's how I look at uh, you're saying wealth, for yeah, instance. Yeah. So here's how I look here. You know, everyone's going to say, this is what you got to do. There's the 10 keys to wealth. I'm just saying, this is what worked for me. And I mm -hmm. think this is what would work well for most men. I, most of the, uh, your audience is young men, young entrepreneurs, yeah. hustlers, yeah. trying to get their shit together. Want to get like on the show that I do when I'm not doing PBD podcast, it's called Sauzecast. Uh, I say you want to get paid, laid, and do it your way. Like, <laughs> what guy doesn't want to make money, get hot chicks, and live their best life? I think that's <laughs> kind of what we all want. Yeah. What else is there, right? <laughs> know your audience. Know, know your audience. <laughs> so um, you asked about wealth. So I would look at it as sort of like almost like an hourglass. That's what it did for me. All right, so what's an hourglass? When I was young, I graduated college, um, Florida State. Uh, I know you went to UM. Shout out to the Canes. What's up? I'm a big Canes <laughs> fan, man, even Tampa. though I went to Florida State. And um, I would say you go wide when you're young. Um, what did I do? I do it. I worked in nightlife. I worked in hospitality. I was a stand-up comedian. I tried to be a sports agent. I was a teacher. <laughs> like there used to be a show called In Living Color. Uh, as a stand-up comedian, I would watch it. I would like stay up late, and it was all like the the uh, Wayne's brothers, mm. Keenan Ivory Wayne's, Damon Wayne's. And there was this one Jamaican character that Damon Wayne's played. He's like, I got 15 jobs, man. I'm a butcher, I'm a baker, I'm a candlestick maker. <laughs> that was and, you. <laughs> and I just was like, let me just see what's up. Let me try this thing out. And um, my aunt, who was, um, I always I get advice from her. So you can get advice from, from ladies from time to time, Joe. <laughs> um, she said, listen, if you're not going to be a lawyer, you're not going to be a doctor, you're not going to be an engineer, an actual professional, you got to learn sales, dude. So mm. I was like, all right, cool, man, sales. What, what am I going to sell? My first job in sales, I was selling airtime for Clear Channel Radio, which was now iHeartMedia. All right, cool. I like the sales thing. I made some money. I was sales rookie of the year, whatever, but it wasn't for me. I was like, I'll do real estate. I'm like, look at the bathroom. It's a nice bathroom. Now this ain't for <laughs> me, right? So uh, I found myself getting into financial sales. And my first year when I was 26, I made a whopping five grand my first year. Not in a, not in a month, in not like... Year year Damn. but luckily i had always 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 good buddies um that were like dude if you need to crash on the couch for for a month or two or whatever uh we got you and i ended up having a, a awesome situation where um one of my buddies because i was an athlete made it to the nba he's like look if you want to take care of my apartment at miami beach while i'm gone i'm like <laughs> i'm coming fucking busy this week but sure all right i'll, yeah. I'll watch your place but that that has sort of afforded me the, the time to, to work on sales. Because anytime you work on sales, it's like planting a tree. Your tree's not going to grow, you know, for Overnight. six months, 12 months. But like 24 months later, you're like, yo, I got a tree here, bro. <laughs> like I planted this thing right here about a year ago. Look at us now. But um, I started out wide. And what was the benefit of that is I knew what I liked and I knew what I didn't like and I knew what my skill set was. And you should always double down on your best skill set, not try to fix your worst skill set. Like, dude, if you asked me to plug in this microphone right now, <laughs> my, brain, my brain would melt. I'm not tech savvy whatsoever, but I'm good at networking. I'm good at understanding people. I'm good at like reading the room. I'm good at understanding, should I be talking now? Should I be listening now? I should probably just listen. Shut the fuck up. All right, cool. Got it. <laughs> you know, two, out, two, two ears, one mouth yeah. for a reason. Cool. Got it. All right, let me get into sales. So started wide and had a good base, but... Um, the one thing that I would caution any young man out there is that at some point, whatever age you pick, 25 for me, 26 for me, you have to have a specialty. And, you know, they say that the riches are in the niches, right? Yeah, you yeah. can't be a jack of all trades. You have to be known for something. Like, all too often I see guys in Miami like, yo, bro, what's up, man? Hey, anytime, you know, I see you out there, I, I, you know, I'm a realtor, but I also I DJ and I just started a crypto fund. If you're, in, <laughs> if you're in NFTs, I got you, by the way. I'm starting a podcast too. I'm like, you're what running. do you do, bro? <laughs> right? You want to be known for one thing. So I got into financial sales and sometimes I saw you guys do an interview with a guy one, uh, one time because I've been seeing your guys' stuff and he said some of the biggest millionaires and billionaires are a boring business. Yeah. They, they hey, that sell. was me. <laughs> that, was, that was you? Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Well, you look great, buddy. <laughs> okay. Thanks, man. Um, Striking me um, handsome, you didn't even yeah, recognize me. <laughs> and um, yeah, I got into this very niche financial uh, sector. It's not sexy whatsoever, um, but I got really good at it. And after my first year where I made five grand, I made a hundred grand. All right, cool. Something's up here. 
Then I made 250 grand. And then I made a half a million. And it's like, all right, income's getting there. I became a specialist. Now, the problem with that is, where you'll lose yourself into your like 30s, as an example, is um, sometimes this specialty might not resonate with regular old people. Like, yeah. hey, what are you up to? It's like, yeah. yeah, I run a financial hedge fund that focuses on life settlement, asset-backed securities, mortgages, and it's like, they're like, Lost yeah, I don't know. they're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so I realized in like 2016, when I started to, I had money, I was good, and I, and I was what I would call quote unquote chilling. Chilling, my definition is, you know, it's sort of what retirement was, you know, a generation ago. Chilling is like when you own your time. All right, I don't have to get up and run to work today. I can do whatever I want today. And how long can that last? Uh, chilling is what you would do with your time if you had unlimited time. Yeah. And uh, the richest people I know, the most successful people I know, don't just sit around and do nothing. You know, people will travel, but a lot of people will work on um, something they're super passionate about or they'll want to give back and help people. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this short clip, check out the full interview here. And if you want to see more clips from this episode, check it out right here.